awkward. All right, I'm your host, Jeffrey D. Calhoun. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, my co-host today is Christy Lee Lucier. She is a script analyst and, and a story consultant at WeFixYourScript.com. Today, we are going to talk about The Mitchells versus The Machines, which is a Netflix original, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to hit you with the log line. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. A quirky, dysfunctional family's road trip is upended when they find themselves in the middle of the robot apocalypse and suddenly become humanity's unlikeliest last hope. What do you think? Oh, I liked it. I actually, I really, really liked this movie. Like, I, I thought really it was. Did. I, I actually really did enjoy it too. It was super cute. And mm -hmm. if you want to watch a film and learn how to write a great flawed character, oh, boom. absolutely. I, not only just the central character, which is the female girl. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like her dad and everybody else around her. I just loved it. I thought it for me, it was just like a masterclass on flawed, quirky characters and how to make them sell to an audience and how right. to create empathy and sympathy. And it was great because, um, you know, so many times writers and even filmmakers can struggle with a, per a character who's too perfect. Sure. Absolutely. And, uh, and in this one, it would be the, um, the posies, which was their neighbors <laughs> who are, um, uh, like the perfect couple, like the perfect right. family, you know, <laughs> um, and, and, and they, they were almost, uh, they weren't villainous, but you, you did not like that, that, that family at all. No. And it was, it was kind of awesome. And I really enjoyed <laughs> how much this movie embraced being weird, being different, um, and having that kind of quirky sense of humor, just because I am definitely, uh, can relate to that. I was always the oddball kid. Oh, yeah. I'm not only oddball kid, but I do find myself being sometimes the oddball parent. So um, it resonated oh, with yeah? me that way, too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I like thought my it was kids, just me. And my, <laughs> my kids probably tell their friends the weirdest stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, when I go to order takeout with the family, I use weird voices. Oh no, I had a friend I go that like, did that. Yeah, you guys order, you guys have like cheeseburgers, you know, and so I like do that. And my, my family's like cracking up. And then when I get to the window, I do totally normal like podcast voice. And then you can see the person is confused because they were looking for the weird guy <laughs> and he's not there. And I like, oh, it's awesome. They got cheese, guys. You know, so I could do the whole thing. Um, and it, but my whole family's out. I mean, my wife, she's got a, a great, like great timing. And my kid has, has inherited a little bit of my weirdness. So it's Me kind too. of perfect. Yeah. Yep. We would be out at the store. Uh, it went, cause my son doesn't look like me. Uh, so we'd be shopping and my kid would look at me and yell stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, don't mind him. He's I thought it was hilarious, but I'm like, daddy's going to get arrested, but it's really, it's a good bit. You're doing great. <laughs> daddy's going to get arrested, but keep going. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. All right. Awesome. So focusing, like yes. this is a great, uh, a great story for people like us. Now, uh, the family ends up going on the road trip because the daughter is going to go to college, right? Going so away to film school. She's going away to film school, which is awesome, right? I so, love that. Yeah, yeah, and she creates these weird viral YouTube videos that the dad doesn't understand because he's he's a, he's a big nature guy. You know, he's not a technology yeah. guy. No. And what I really thought was cool, because I was trying to figure out, okay, what is the theme they're going with here? Yeah. And it, we we started to realize it's a, this is a film about rejection. I could see that. Yeah. Rejection. Um, and, and moreover to not only rejection, but, um, fear of, uh, I, yeah, I can't even think of the word, but yeah, rejection. That's, that's yeah. And not understanding it. like, you know, generational differences. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think rejection is a big part of it, especially when you have the, um, uh, the, the Steve jobs, Bill Gates ish, young tech guru, you know, who creates right. the iPhone, who then creates the iPhone replacement and rejects it, right? Sure. And that yeah. kind of, that creates the robot apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But then the central character, she feels rejected, right? Because her father doesn't understand her. Her father doesn't you know? understand her, doesn't and accept it, her. Yeah. And, and same, yeah, acceptance. Exactly. There you mm -hmm. go. And then, and then he feels 
you know, rejected as a father because he feels like he's trying. So it's that generational miscommunication, not understanding. You know, I remember when I was younger, my parents would be like, when you have kids and you get older, you'll finally know what we're talking about. And I get it. You know, it only took like 20, 30 plus years. So, um, but they, they really touch on it in a really heartwarming way because this family loves each other. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can tell there's still, there's just love there. It's just that you're right. That generational gap and that understanding of like, you don't get me, you don't get where I'm coming from, or you're not, you got to get with the times, dad, that kind of thing. <laughs> that's, that's basically kind of how it's, you know, it's set up to be. And, and I feel like the acceptance and the rejection, but then also this really unique look on, um, you know, what the modern versus maybe previous kind of definition would be of success yeah. or would be of, you know, achieving right. something in life. And for him, it was to have happiness. It was to, you know, always make sure you're secure, that kind Security. of thing. Yeah. And for her, it's like, I just want to do my art. That's yeah. what I am. It's who I, that's my voice kind of thing. It's expression. Know? Yeah. She wants to be able to express herself. And she even mentions that in the story of she had a hard time figuring out who she was. Yeah. So when she finally starts to get an idea of being this quirky indie filmmaker, and then she starts to find a tribe around that, that starts to kind of motivate her to become her own person, which then leads to conflict with dad who wants to protect his baby girl. Sure. Yeah. You know, and and I thought it was great. And then revealing, you know, the visual of the moose that yeah, that was Aww. so touching. Was so cute. Oh my god, you want to so just cute. Talk about brilliant um foreshadowing, right. showing how much it means to him when the with the inevitable reveal of it was part of the cabin of his yes. dream. It was his, his it was heart, heart part of his dream that he sacrificed sacrifice for her. Yeah. Oh my absolutely. God. Yeah. It was great. That was, I really loved that throughout. And I was, I was actually wondering that too. Cause I'm like, why does he have this little wooden moose just sitting there? Oh yeah. But you know, I knew it was going to come back into place. So yeah. I'm really glad that that was the reveal for it, which was awesome. Exactly. Like if you're going to put, uh, if you're, it's like Chekhov's gun, right? If you're going to put something in, in the film, it needs to have meaning. It needs to have purpose or it shouldn't be there. And so, so the writers are obviously, how do we create a visual representation of this man's love, a father's love for his daughter? Right. They did it through that hippo. Oh my God. And tying it to his dreams. Absolutely brilliant writing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I love how the, the main, the main theme of acceptance, rejection, um, and quirkiness all rolled into one played out through all of the characters so you have her younger right. her younger brother <laughs> right dinosaur enthusiast it's just which, so afraid of like showing his true feelings yeah <laughs> so, so cute <laughs> so cute and then willing to argue with anybody about dinosaurs i just love that right and then you have mom the peacemaker in the house yeah and then yeah. you have the cross-eyed dog right mm-hmm. And all of them have their own subplot, which I thought was awesome. You've got mom, who is the eternal peacemaker until the end of the movie when her baby. She sees her baby, right? She sees her baby getting, getting, (laughs) yeah, she turns into a a, mother of two fierce warrior woman. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, she's just total tiger mom, (laughs) you know, but then, uh, and then the kid has his arc with, Mm -hmm. with the, with the girl next door. The friend. Yep. This is what I love about subplots. So you have the A plot, mom and dad, the conflict. You've got the you've got the the B plot with her and the dad. Um, you've got the C plot with the mom, and then you have a D plot, right? And when you start getting further down the chain of subplots, you start getting less and less screen time. Right. So we have the just the little hint of a D or an E plot with the dog. With the dog, so great, <laughs> so good. So it's absolutely good. brilliant because we start out to the very early on where the dog is like super cross-eyed, right? Oh, and yeah. they're they're just like, can you just make your eyes normal, right? And he just can't do it. But then at the very end of the film, when when it comes down to it, he forces his eyes to be normal. <laughs> 
he still can't catch it. He still can't do it, but it doesn't matter because he did it. His plot his, his so is complete. And then and then the phone is is, you know, in a surprising and atypical way. We think it's gonna fall in the big pool of water. If of course it doesn't, it falls in a glass of water, which is awesome. It's really good. You know, breaking that expectation yeah. is important when it comes to 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 writing, you know. Right, right. Yeah, it's doing that last minute kind of, you know, twist. What's the twist there? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so we have the subplots. Did you have any kind of visual uh, subtext that you you were like picking up going along the way? Other than we had the the moose. Yeah, other than the moose. Well, I think there was a number of things. I mean, I thought it was really interesting to me. There was a there was kind of a message that it was also about um, a modern technology oh, and um, yeah, this kind of idea of. Um, are you defined by that modern technology? What, who have we become as people right. when we can't actually communicate and talk to one right. another because our screens are in our faces? Yeah, the bluish, the blue ghoulish glow as the dad yeah. refers to it. I thought that was awesome. That was really awesome. And I like for me, one of my most like favorite moment of the whole movie that like laugh out loud yeah. funny was when she says <laughs> That she's going to turn off the Wi-Fi <laughs> that's on the my planet. That's my favorite part of the film, too. And the fact that everybody loses their absolute <laughs> loving marbles is, like, so reality. Because not only for just yeah. us on a general daily basis, yeah. but I have a child who is a gamer. And across the house, if the internet goes out for five seconds, the whole house hears it. <laughs> so it was just resonant of, like, that's my life. And it just yeah. made me laugh. It was so good. I mean, it's really great when you can have a comedy that's heartfelt like this, and then it can work in a little bit of social commentary. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't really beat you over the head with it, but it definitely shines a light on it. I thought mm -hmm. it was great. Um, you know, when the lady's like, does anybody want to take a picture of my food? And then the other guy's like, can you open this box in front of me? Like, I thought that was absolutely absolutely hysterical so funny i mean i was oh. cracking up it was really great and then he had guys creating like a a church of the wi-fi <laughs> it's, like, it's the three beats right they did the first second and first then the third, third beat yep. is like comedy like, threes <laughs> right so good so yeah, good. i was like ah oh, it's just it's, it's, it was just it was perfection <laughs> really yeah that was definitely my favorite i really enjoyed um the sidekick robots that Oh yeah. Create yeah. their own personality. Again, another subplot. Um, and drawing the faces is a great visual for us to distinguish right. them from all the other robots, which I thought, yeah, of course, really good. It was really good. good which yeah, worked really, worked good. really well. And again, it's just this whole, this reliance on, yeah, they're there to help us and they do what we say, but at what point do they get kind of misprogrammed to where yeah, they, st they stop just yeah functioning normal. So yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. It was I, really cool. Yeah, and I and I read some show notes that they designed the spaceships after the PS5, which I thought was apropos. oh no way yeah. yeah. So that may, that's another visual mm -hmm. like here. This is what's going on. It's gonna you know send you away and you're not gonna come back. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. I yeah, mean, I, I mean I, clearly, I, obviously, the whole idea of like yes, this Bill Gates kind of, you know, Steve yeah. Jobs guy out there introducing new technology kind of thing and then not yeah. realizing and they even I created this. Like yeah. 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 And and then talking about, oh, maybe we shouldn't use a social media platform to take all of your information and sell it. You know? <laughs> it's like <laughs> pretty subtle there, guys. <laughs> um but I thought the comedy beats were were right on point and it still had heart. Um I enjoyed the main conflict and I thought it was great. It's the initial main conflict leading up to the midpoint yeah. is like straight out of structure. So, you know, we have this destination we're going to go to and destroy these robots. And so they get to the mall, right? So, and when they fail at the mall, that is like mid act, you know, oh, death yeah. scene right there Absolutely. where they lose yep. mm -hmm. um, because they were trying to use an old piece of information. Then they have to regather themselves. Right to lean towards uh towards the, the resolution mm -hmm. and then immediately following that you have that deep heart plot between her and the dad mm -hmm. yeah where they're kind of coming to terms and understanding each other but she's faking it well, i was like yeah. oh my god so yeah. good that's that you know, and i'm thinking in my mind okay that's gonna come back in the in the oh. next death resurrection scene <laughs> for sure i don't want to say I called it but yeah <laughs> um it was it was it was perfect but i could not get past the Furby thing. That oh no, I know. As soon as I, I saw that. I was 
die. Yeah, that was <laughs> hilarious. Like a Furby tribe, bring out the elder. Bring out the elder. And of course they're doing the sound. Yeah. But they've got the <laughs> subtitles at the bottom. It was so clever. Like just so, oh my I mean, God. I was cracking up too. I'm like, it was ah! brilliant. When, when Furbies first came out, I was, I worked at the mall. That was like, oh, so, that, I mean, I was young, young. Yeah. And I remember guys, walk, guys, dudes walking around with Furbies, like showing them off <laughs> of how proud they were because you couldn't find a Furby. And, oh, I, yeah. and I didn't understand it, you know, but it was a status symbol for a minute. There's like, <laughs> it's just a Furby. You know, it's so weird. So, so seeing that in the movie, I was like, this is, this is so great. These guys went, they're definitely catering to multiple generations. They're catering oh. to gener generation Xers. They were catering to millennials mm -hmm. and then they were catering to their kids and like it is yep. so hard to create comedy generationally like that That's right they did their homework man oh for sure i was that was actually kind of one of my most favorite things about the movie was the uh, way that they were able to weave that in and all the elements that you could point out that were so culturally relevant yeah just depending on what it was i mean there was references to movie scenes you could hear movie music you could hear yeah. tv show things like it was so they were very very smart and clever about absolutely it. yeah i mean usually if you look at something like a shrek and they're trying to do that they'll do a bit or a joke that is clearly adult oriented but it's sure. just just removed enough and beyond kids that they won't get it that was not this film this film was was like just reaching out and finding funny bits that everybody could laugh at and then using it you know pop culturally and then doing a really cool thing of mixed media which i hadn't oh, really yeah. seen much of and i thought that was very interesting it felt a little youtube viral video y and i think that was the point it was to appeal to you know to our generation our right? kids like that, my kid right? his television is youtube he's YouTube. not going on cable you know mm -hmm. and so i think it's a really smart idea to work in market wise if we're talking about marketing this thing to yeah. work that in that mixed media into an animated platform Oh, it was, it was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I loved every aspect of that because you're right. Again, for me, it's like, Hey, my kid watches YouTube all the time. Yeah. So that to him, that's a, that's a yeah. norm yeah. to us. It's like, it's kind of like, it's a YouTube thing to them. It's like, that's normal. That's normal TV to them now. Yeah. That's it's it's crazy. So, yeah. To me, it's like, Oh, I can't remember how to do this one thing. Let me Google it real quick and go on YouTube. <laughs> and then my kids like watching shows and following, you know, whatnot, oh, and following so, whatever. And then when yeah. the dad has to figure out how to use oh, the phone, <laughs> that was another probably scene where I was laughing out loud. Like, it but just... he actually, it deadly hits the Spanish button. I was like, <laughs> I lost it. I was like, this is brilliant. This is so good. And then he's like, you know, updates. Do I do it now or later? And he's like, uh, I don't know what you're <laughs> WWW and then D O T yeah. for dot. <laughs> Lost it. So was so good, done. Yeah. It was great. Oh yeah. This this is a, this is definitely a recommend anybody who's got Netflix, definitely check out the Mitchells versus the Machines. Absolutely love it. This this episode is brought to you by the Script Summit Screenplay Contest, where you can win a chance of a cash prize or even a contract with a Hollywood talent manager. So just go on scriptsummit.com for that. What are you thinking about next week? I don't know because I I know we said like comedy and this even though it was animated it was perfect it was a great it was. comedy it was a great um com. so I don't know I don't know where we should go next All I don't right. know horror let's look at let's do something horror let's go back we to horror do, we could do scary we could do scary yeah I'm down with that I, I need to get ready because I'm getting ready to see you know a horror movie in June I'm getting ready to see Conjuring three and so like I want to get in the horror vibe let's you got to get into it I gotta yeah prep I, I try and steer away from too many ghost stories man. I well, know. I mean, it doesn't have to be supernatural horror. We could do okay. something else. I'm very sensitive. But, yeah. Are you very sensitive? <laughs> are you, are you, are you afraid of ghosts? I'm an oh, easy please. scare. Like okay. I can't even tell you. Um, <laughs> I have a friend that goes with me to a film at a theater, not because he wants to watch the scary movie. It's because he wants to watch me watch the scary movie. <laughs> That's perfection. That's I'm very great. animated. I've talked to the screen. I'm like, what are you doing? Don't do no. Oh I know. my what? God. Like I'm that guy. And then he's Why are you cracking doing up. that. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it broke his arm. Like, I'm like <laughs> you deserve I'm, that. That was I'm coming. Pro I'm processing it while it's happening yet. Yeah, it's not, it's not a good look, but All right. it is what let's it do is. scary. Then let's just do it. We'll, we'll do, do it. it. We'll do scary. All right. Very good.